Hi everyone, Pyromonger back with another 3D Studio Max tutorial. This time we're going to learn how to make a vine in 3D Studio Max as well as make it grow up a path and follow around an object. So here's kind of what you'll end up with in the end. A vine that is able to animate and grow as you see fit. So start, start anew and get going. First you want to create a cylinder. So if you go over to your geometry here, click cylinder and just draw out the cylinder here. This will act as the object that the vine will grow grow around. And we can just move it off to the side there and duplicate it. To duplicate, hold shift and left click and then just kind of drag to the side there. And when you let go, this option will pop up. So it says clone options. You can hit uh, copy and then hit OK. And we will rename this to vine as well as change it to a green color just so we can kind of tell everything apart. Okay, so now we have our vine and we have the object that it will grow around. So now we need to set up the curve that will uh, control how it grows. So I'm gonna switch over to the top view. Go over here and then to shapes, click line. And I'll start over here and then the grow direction will kind of go over and around and spiral up the cylinder. So I'll just start clicking away make it weave a little back and forth before it gets over to the cylinder and then here's where I'll make it wrap around so just drawing out my points and then right click finishes the creation of the curve there's one spot here it's a little too sharp and jagged so I'll just fix that real fast looking at it from the top view okay so now if we check over the perspective we have this almost like a question mark looking curve and that's what we'll use to start editing to make the uh, the creation of the vine so next we'll want to make this curve travel up the cylinder and to do that we can play with our snap toggles here so if you right click on snap toggles choose face as well as center face and then activate the snap toggle option with the line still selected go to the vertex so I'm just hitting one for that and then start grabbing the points from here and dragging them onto the cylinder. So we're just going to make a spiral going up the cylinder. Oops. There we go. So up, 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 and spiraling around. Try to make these about evenly spaced if you can. It'll help later on when you're tweaking how the effect works. If they're too far apart and too jagged, uh, you can get more unwanted results. So just spiraling up, spiraling up, point by point. And last one there. All right. So. So now we have a vine, we can turn off our snap toggle, we have our vine, we have our object that is acting as the pole or something that the vine will grow around, and the curve that will control the, uh, the growth of the vine. So next, you select the vine itself, I'll just zero it out real fast, zero, zero, okay. And I'm putting a modifier on called path deform, and with that selected, uh, click this button here called pick path and then click the curve. So it gets a little jumbled up at first, but we can fix that easily if you click move to path. And so now it's on the path and centered, but it's a bit large. And if we go down the stack to the cylinder, we can start playing with the radius as well as the height until we get something a little more vine-like for the creation. <clears throat> okay, so now <coughs> We need to make it grow up the cylinder here. <clears throat> and to use that to do that we'll use the stretch command, but first I'll show you the percent command. A lot of times you use the path to form and use the percent command and it kind of just trails along the curve like this, which is a great effect, but not what we're looking for. So we'll use what's called the stretch command. And that keeps it in place but stretches out almost like it's scaling it. 
So if we check over here, it's coming around the corner, and then finished. So it's a bit jaggy, and that's because you can see it, that we don't have a lot of segments going around the cylinder. And so it doesn't have enough points to follow the curve correctly. So if we go down to the cylinder stack, and then change <coughs> the height segment, we can uh, start smoothing out the result to something more desirable. Okay, so I just kind of cranked it up until it looks like it's following the curve correctly. And good, okay, so we have a uniform scale throughout the whole cylinder right now. And a vine would not have that, or a tentacle, or whatever you're creating. Chances are there'll be some kind of uh, pinching as it gets further away from its base. And to do that, we'll use what's called a taper modifier. So you click taper, and amount, and then start pinching it in. So you can see here that it's uh, uniformly scaling down as it spirals up. Okay. So now, after that happens, you can see sometimes you'll get clipping through your object, and that's another easy fix. So just click off that and grab only your line. And we can go ahead and move the point out just a little bit further so that the clipping goes away. <clears throat> this little guy, you get the point. And maybe this last one. Okay. So now we need to make it grow. And we're in the home stretch here. So go back to your path to form. We can bring our stretch down to zero again, turn on auto key, go bring our slider over to 100 frames or however many frames you want, and then just start the stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And try not to overshoot the line, otherwise you'll get, it'll just keep going in the last uh, direction from the point. And so try to make it end right on the curve there. So for me, it's 65.92. So if I turn off auto key, we can just kind of play through the timeline <clears throat> and we can see our vine growing from nothing and just kind of moving, moving, moving up and around our object. So that's an easy way of making a vine or a tentacle grow around an object. Thanks for watching.